All right, creatures of the night, welcome to episode 225 of Talking Taker, our encyclopedic exploration dig up the career of the greatest professional wrestling character of all time, The Undertaker. My name is Alex Dorio. I want to thank all you out there in the pod street crew for joining us yeah. for yet another round of Dead Man Talking. And I am joined, as always, by my co-host, my wrestling buddy, my fellow creature of the night. He is a, a manager of the SmackDown Hotel, and he is always bringing the thunder, Mr. <laughs> Travis White. Uh, Travis, how you doing tonight? I'm great, man. Tonight's going to be just too sweet. Absolutely. I, <laughs> I knew you'd be excited because we're doing a little WCW action on the podcast tonight. Uh, very special episode. Uh, last year on the show, we did a fun episode uh, covering the Monday Night Wars. So we, we covered um, a Raw episode and a Nitro episode. Nitro episode where you were at, Travis, where Goldberg yes, won world title from Hulk Hogan in the Georgia Dome. And then we compared that with the Raw on that same night where... Um, the Undertaker dressed up as Kane uh, to win the number one contendership uh, going into SummerSlam on that highway to hell. Uh, tonight, we're going to look back 25 years to April 29th of 1999, and we're going to do the Thursday Night Wars, uh, the war that doesn't quite get talked about quite as much as the Monday Night Wars. But this was a very important night in WWE history because it is the pilot episode of SmackDown. Uh, the very first episode, SmackDown premiered as a ongoing series in August of 99, but they had a one-off special uh, considered the pilot episode, April 29th, 99, and it aired at the same time as WCW Thunder over on TBS. So we thought we'd compare and contrast those two main events because our boy, The Undertaker, he's the main event that night in a giant tag team match. It's him and Triple H going up against The Rock, and Stone Cold Steve Austin, you know, maybe the biggest tag team match in wrestling history up to that point. That's at least what Michael yeah. Cole says. And, uh, yeah. you know, <laughs> it's a fair point. Uh, so, Travis, since we're covering a tag team match and since it involves Stone Cold Steve Austin, we had to bring on some tag team opponents to talk it up with tonight. So uh, welcome back to the show for, I don't know, seventh or eighth time up at this point, I think. Uh, we got Mike and JV from the Bottom Line Wrestling Cast back for the first time in a while. How's it going, fellas? Thank you for having us back. Yeah, I think it's about seventh or eighth time. Yeah, you nailed like that. That's crazy. That, yeah. It's been that many times. We don't do it enough because it doesn't feel like it's been that many times. I know. It's, we... it's, I mean, it's like once or twice a year, and it's crazy yeah. to think that it's, it's been that many times. So yeah. <laughs> once or twice a year because we've been doing it for a while. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, we had to make the hot tag to you guys tonight to bring you in with this tag team match, just like, you know, the our truth is waiting on that hot tag at WrestleMania the other night. So. <laughs> yeah. One of the best parts of the whole two nights. The Agreed. hot tag. <laughs> the hot truth. Wow. I love it. <laughs> he was He's one of the man. highlights of WrestleMania weekend. He's been oh, the highlights man. of like the past four months of wrestling. One of the <laughs> yeah. highlights. Yeah. He's a human highlight reel for yeah. like every week. So. I mean, he's he, he wasn't on this SmackDown, but he almost, I mean, he was <laughs> on some of these early episodes. <laughs> yeah. He came in in 2000, so yeah. not long after this, yeah. which is <laughs> wild to say. But yeah, uh, the main event of Thunder that night, uh, we've got DDP defending the World Heavyweight title against the Beast from the East, Bam Bam Ooh. Bigelow, in a hardcore match. So two very different main events, two very different shows. We will compare and contrast those. Uh, we'll talk about some of the other things that were going on on both of those shows, and we'll get everybody's opinions on all those. We'll give you the timestamps to watch along those with us uh, here in a little bit. But uh, just off the bat, um, what are you guys' memories? Anybody can chime in here. Do you remember this pilot episode of SmackDown happening? Uh, do you remember watching it at all back in April of 1999? Um, do you have you know any memories at all of this? I have slight memories of there's going to be a new show. And then I feel like I totally missed this debut one-off episode in april because it didn't come out until when like september october fall. august yeah later yeah august so i i knew it was coming but i i don't remember seeing this live i can't pretend to say that i did so no 
And then when the show did premiere, it's like, oh, okay, I'm in. But right now, I don't, I don't remember this. Yeah, I'm, I'm especially with you. Same thing. especially this big match too. Like, I don't know, it slipped by. A lot of things at that time <laughs> just slipped by. Of course. Yeah, JV, you said you don't remember either. Yeah, I don't. I I was probably aware this was happening and everything because like wrestling was still red hot for me in '99, but I. I don't remember watching it when it, when it released. Yeah. It's weird for such a historic show and moment. I mean, it's kind of, it slips everybody's minds that people don't talk about it as much and it got a massive rating. So a lot of people did watch it and I'll we'll talk about the ratings uh, later on tonight, but, but certainly there were millions of people watching it. Uh, Travis, any, were you watching it? I remember being hyped for the fact, again, we had, the more wrestling on when I was 13, the better. And this was six <laughs> days after my birthday. So I was just a fresh 13-year-old. So I was like, yeah, I have birthday to me. I'm getting a new show. So I don't. I do remember, obviously, I'm going to be WCW heavy. So I'm going to be watching Thunder more. But I was definitely flipping over and watching this. Because it would have been on U. Was it on, was on UPN the first time? It day? was on UPN. Yeah, I was going to ask. So. Was it UPN? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then it went there officially later in August. But yeah, I remember flipping around. Uh, and uh, I remember this main event being... The main event, but I mean, I was more focused on the Jersey Boys fighting on WCW <laughs> over on TBS. So, well, I don't think I even had UPN. That's my memory of it, which is I don't wasn't able to watch it the, on this premiere night. So I remember being so upset, and I watched. I had to watch you still like have Comcast or Jones Inner Cable, whatever it was called. At that dude, point. I was thinking about I had that analogy. today. So yeah, I had how, at the point. how old do we sound right now? There were yeah. two competing cable companies <laughs> yeah. in Augusta, in Georgia. Yeah. So wow. Travis had oh. one of them. I had the other one. Uh, you know, it's such an ancient thing to yeah. be thinking about anymore. But uh, yeah, Travis has had it. And we got you. They added UPN for the fall. So I, I could yeah. watch SmackDown starting in the fall. But I, I had to watch like Livewire on Saturday morning to like get the, the highlights of this episode of SmackDown. Cause a lot, ha- it's a, it's a very important episode. A couple of major storyline elements happen on here. They're definitely trying to draw people in and, yeah. and make it a big deal. Um, but we'll talk about all that. Um, but we've got some important things to talk about in this month's edition of undertaker sightings f- uh, covering the month of April, a uh, pretty massive month, uh, just a couple things, but they're pretty huge. And I'm glad Mike and JV are on here to give their thoughts on them as well. I mean, obviously, uh, the biggest moment of them all, of course, the undertaker inducting Muhammad Ali into uh. the WWE. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that would be probably enough to talk about on a normal episode. I mean, uh, it was cool, but very odd. But uh, of course, the the huge moment, the Undertaker making the save, saving the story, if you will, in the main event of WrestleMania 40 night to Cody Rhodes versus Roman Reigns for the WWE Championship. Um, I mean, Travis, you and I, we got to watch night one together yeah. uh, at your house in Tennessee. I had to come come back home. So I uh, watched night two by myself. Uh, but I mean, we were texting. I know we popped huge. You you showed a video of you and your kids just jumping out of their chairs uh, at the end of that match. Oh, yeah. Um, I literally, so I had two, two of the guys that were there with night one were with me again night two watching. Um, and one of them... Ben, he, again, he's a wrestling fan from like the Dusty Rhodes era. He doesn't know. Any, I was like, that's Dusty's kid in the main event. So anyway, bringing him in. So he hadn't watched in 30 something years. He's when it, when that bong hits, I jump like my house is on fire. I jump off of the couch so high. And Ben is like blown away. And I'm getting so excited, but he sees the joy in my, because I didn't know Taker was going to be there. I had no, no idea. Of course like, not. It blew me away. I, people were speculating Austin or whatever, which right. we'll get to that in a second. But um, I was like a little kid, man. I jumped out of my seat, was like, heck yeah. I was freaking out, man, just like everybody in the arena was. And then, yeah, when, when the Cody actually won, I was actually filming my boys, hoping, praying Cody was going to win, filming my kids' reaction because they, uh, they're big Cody Rhodes fans. And they had Cody oh, Rhodes yeah. T-shirts on that night and everything, so it was cool. So. Uh, Mike JV, I, I think y'all talked about on your last podcast. Y'all were going to get together and watch it. Were, did y'all watch it together, or, or what were your what were your thoughts of everything? 
Yeah, uh, JV, we watched JV Saturday hosted. together. Yeah, we watched yeah. Saturday okay. together. I had hosted. We ordered food and stuff. But then yeah. Sunday we watched. Uh, we watched alone. Well, I watched it alone. Yeah. 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 Same here. I, I actually, yeah, I fell asleep. Oh, no. <laughs> really? You weren't awake. That's, that's why you weren't. Uh, that's why you weren't active. Yeah, Sunday, the main event. I fell asleep. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought you. I I thought, I'm like, no way he fell asleep. I thought Brutal. you were just like into it and no. didn't want to be bothered. Oh. No. I mean, generally, I am like that. I'll, I'll like sh- not pay attention to the messages sometimes and just uh, let me Shame. watch this. Shame. Yeah. But, <laughs> no, I, I, I knew it was gonna happen. I, I set myself up. I was like, all right. I'm going to, the next day was a work day, so I was like, all right, I'm good. I'm going to go to yeah, bed. I got up at 5 oh. the next morning. Yeah, dude, you're a fucking, I went to bed at oh, 1 sorry, and got up at 5. You're a teacher, dude. <laughs> and I'm a teacher, yeah. so you can't tell me how hard it is. Because it's not. I'm not saying it's hard. I'm I'm not to get to bed. <laughs> so, I was like, I'm going to get in bed at 8 o'clock. Mania is I watched. I watched every match up to the Bailey match. And then fell asleep oh, during that match. match. Okay. And then I woke up at those press conferences. Oh, oh man. It. Did what you go back the next fuck? day? Yeah, I watched the next day. Okay. Right. But then I have a buddy at work who watched it, and he, he told me. We watched it during one of my breaks. Like, oh, you got to put on the match. And we watched okay. it. Oh, that's the fallout cool. to everything. Yeah. <laughs> that's actually cool to watch it during, during work. Yeah. I just put on Peacock <laughs> at work and <laughs> check it out. There break. you go. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I knew it was gonna happen. I fell asleep during a summer slam main event too. It's like I can't stay up for these main events anymore. Oh, man. It's tough, man. It's <laughs> well, lucky for you, backlash is at like one p.m. So <laughs> lucky for you. you're gonna be a big fan of all these international ones. <laughs> I think <laughs> I'm starting to enjoy watching wrestling when it's not live. <laughs> oh, because I watched nah, I watched Raw the other night. I watched it the next day. And I was like, oh, I, I like this. I can actually pay attention to what's going on and fast forward through stuff. And I enjoy it. I'm with I you. get it. I get it. I'm not struggling through it. I'm like, all right, if I don't like this, I'll fast forward. Well, I think whether you watch it live or not, uh, it's hard to not get excited <laughs> for that moment. Uh, I mean, just the last five minutes in general with all the run-ins, um, uh, with Cena starting it off and then the Usos coming out. Um, and then, of course, the Undertaker getting the big moment there at the end. Massive reaction. Um, I mean, a lot of speculation online. And, and, and you know, I was certainly, I, I said it there. I mean, I feel like the only thing that was missing was Stone Cold giving, giving a beer toast there at the end. Uh, do you guys think it would have worked better with Stone Cold? Would you have liked to see Stone Cold added in there? I'll, I'll answer that first. Okay. So would I have liked to have seen Stone Cold selfishly? Yes. Sure. Would it have worked better? No. I agree because wholeheartedly. It would have, and at first I wasn't in this camp, but the next day it hit me. I'm like, no, because this moment in this story is about Cody Rhodes. If Austin shows up, Austin's big, right? He's huge. Undertaker's the only guy that could pull it off because he can hit it and get out, right? Mm. He can do what he's got to yes. do, get out, hang around for the celebration. He ain't, he ain't stealing the spotlight. There's really no way for Austin to get out. He could have run into the crowd or whatever, but yep. no matter what, the next day. And afterwards, everyone's going to be talking about Austin. They're going to want to interview Austin. Yep. Taker's character just fit this better. And then even with Cody's story, Cody kind of – Undertaker was around in the locker room with Cody. Mm-hmm. Austin yeah. wasn't, right? Mm-hmm. So it made more sense for Cody's story too. Selfishly, yeah, I wanted to see Austin. I wanted to see him come in, stun a bunch of people, drinking beers at the end. But then that's what it would have been about. It wouldn't have been about Cody. Amen. I agree. Well with everything said, you JV. Said. Yeah, I agree. Yep. Very well said. Yeah. That was my thing. Again, a lot of people were like, you know, it would have been better with Austin. But no, like this, like you said, Taker can boom, the lights come up. He's there, hits it, quits it. He's gone. You know, Austin would have had to, if the glass broke, Austin would have had to drive down on the ATV, <laughs> yeah. the whole, do circles around it, which is so awesome. Oh, it would have It would have taken away. Yeah. It would have taken away Definitely. from that. Cody. And, you know, and all the, all the beer after where it would we wouldn't talk about Cody drinking beer with Austin instead of what happened, you know. And also, like you said, takers this this since since COVID, this whole bloodline thing has been all about more about story than WWE's been since Taker and Kane. Honestly, like this has been the most story driven era uh, of this particular story. And like Taker 
has history with Roman. He's the only yeah. guy that beat him at Mania that's not named Brock Lesnar. And the Shield put him out for a while. Who's who's the one that power bombed him? Roman Reigns is the one that power bombed the table. You know, uh, Moxley and and uh, what's his name, Seth helped helped him up. So I'm like, he's got history. He tagged with Roman. You know, against Drew and, and Shane. So there's history there. Austin would have been great for a one off pop. It would have been insane. But Taker made more sense, and I'm glad that that was the call. So. Yeah, I mean, I, I think we'll never know. I mean, if Stone Cold, if they asked him, uh, I'd, I'd be shocked if they didn't ask him uh, to be involved. So I don't I don't know if that was the first plan or, or not, or if he was ever involved in the plans. But yeah, I do Melter think it says worked it was, out so I don't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe it either. Yeah. I, can't, I can't believe that it, it, it came down to money. Yeah, I, that's I not Austin. Right. Dude. Yeah, that's not it doesn't him. sound right at all. I, I wouldn't be shocked if Austin was like. Doesn't make sense. Was like no, oh, yeah, like that. this doesn't make yeah. sense. Why? Like, yeah. why am I here? And well, honestly, like th- that 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 show sold. All the money was like all the money they were gonna make, they made yes. leading into oh, the main yeah. event. Yeah, it was the show's already sold. Yep. Yeah. So yeah. like, what are you gonna like? What's the point? So now, who knows? SummerSlam, maybe WrestleMania next year. If they want to have a Rock Austin moment, yes, right. That's still on the table. Yep. And they Absolutely. can still sell that and and cash in and make more money on that. Yep. And, uh, you know, when we get Undertaker versus Rock at WrestleMania 41, <laughs> we can have Stone Cold run into there for that. <laughs> but Taker talks about on his podcast this week, I sent it to you, Alex, and I don't know if you got a chance to listen to it or not yet, but he talks about kind of getting the Iggy on Tuesday that they mm. might want him to do yeah. something. And that's Tuesday. The match was on Sunday. Wow. So they yeah. still hadn't decided, like, what. The actual, you know, finish I how they're going to get to sure. it. Yeah, I believe that completely. And then, um, so he brought his stuff, which again, it was street clothes taker because the dead man guy is done is d- dead. You know that the, well, the the cape, unless you're in Saudi, <laughs> that didn't pay him enough. To yeah, yeah. Up in that. yeah. But um, so he's sitting there in the um, they had done like a run through thing earlier, but he wasn't in it. And then mm. they uh, they, they were doing rehearsals and stuff earlier in the day, but he. He didn't know if he was part of it in during the show. I think it was about an hour, hour and 50 minutes through night two. He gets a text and he just gets up and walks out because he's in like a box. He's in a box at, up top at, at with his, his family There's and some, uh, like, his TikToks and stuff of people like yeah. talking to him and everything. Yeah. Yeah. So he's up in a box. He gets a text and he just dips out. And uh, his old co-host for the podcast, like, I don't know where you went. He's like, Kfabe, hey, brother. Kfabe. <laughs> He said Michelle's the only one that knew anything was possibly going to happen. So no way. he found out an hour into the show that it was actually happening. Wow. That they were going to wow. go through with it. So that's crazy, man. So, yeah, pretty cool. And, you know, we got all the, the memes of Undertaker running away through the stadium yeah. after, <laughs> after he did the run. Yeah. <laughs> so we got that priceless moment. Yeah. And, and one more thing. Yeah, of Taker's course. The, Taker's the final boss. Exactly. Right. He's the Real exactly w, like WWE WWF lore. Like I'm an Austin guy, Prue's an Austin guy. Of course. But Taker's the final boss. Exactly. He's at the top of the Mortal Kombat tower. Yeah. Right. You know. Right. He yep. could take right. Shang Tsung's place. Yeah. In Mortal Kombat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Your soul Slide in the mine. other Taker. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. He's the Soul Taker. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> I, I, and, you know, they talked about, I, I don't know if commentary talked about it, but it was definitely on social media uh, during WrestleMania weekend. But, I mean, him and Rock are the only two guys to have ever, yeah. to main event a WrestleMania in four decades. So the 90s, the 2000s, the 2010s, and then 2020s. So with Rock doing this, Crazy. and then Undertaker having the Boneyard match uh, during the COVID mania, which counts, definitely counts as a main event. Yeah. So uh, pretty cool that those two guys have that history and then they get to have that moment rest me in night two i mean it's it's one of those that's um along with cody winning i think that face off choke slam with undertaker and rock that's going to be in video packages for wrestlemanias for the next four years you know it's going to be one of those things so pretty and awesome let's, let's just back up and give dwayne johnson his flowers have you seen somebody sell as good as that man like he's been in wwe for four months like since he's come back he sells better than almost anybody that's not named, uh, I don't know, uh, I don't know, Austin Theory. Like, Austin Theory sells really well. But The Rock sells better than anybody else on the whole roster. He's so good. I thought Anything he did. He sells. I thought he looked great what? on night one. I was really impressed. Yeah. I was really afraid he wasn't going to be able to, to go. But, I mean, he looked great. He looked awesome. He is the great one. 
Yeah. Yeah. Not only in ring and action, but how how crazy is it that he's just able to come back and become a heel like that? Like oh gosh. Oh. Quick turn he loved it. He loved it. And you it was so natural. Yeah. Yeah. He got to be everything he oh, wanted yeah. to be in WWE. Everything yeah. he wanted to be in Black Adam. He mm-hmm. basically <laughs> Which yes, that movie well, yes. you know, he, he got to be. He had the Black Adam entrance. With yes, the, yeah, he, he just did. pop up. It was awesome. I loved it. I loved it too. I really do think this like kind of breathed new life into him in yes. Hollywood. Like, not that his career was dying, but like he had a few misses like the past few years. Yeah. And I, you know, I, I think him coming back to wrestling and just having this run that had everybody talking, just uh. You know, I gave him a little boost. I would say his career I gave him a little juice that he needed. So, uh, but probably not enough for Black Adam too. But uh, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I do think we should mention. Uh, we don't have to spend a ton of time talking about it, but I don't think we talked about it last month, Travis. But the Undertaker also did the voiceover for the uh, Bray Wyatt mm. documentary that came out on April 1st on Peacock. I have not finished it. I, I did get to start it, oh boy. but uh, I mean, it's really well done. And that's the thing. Like, I know it's so heavy. Like I, I, I don't just like, and I'll just want to throw it on in the background while I'm watching it. Cause yeah, I, you gotta... I want to appreciate it, but a uh, pretty cool, pretty unique thing. We've never seen Undertaker do something quite like that, but it just goes to show you the respect he has uh, admiration. He had for, uh, Bray Wyatt. Yeah, it's it's. I don't think anybody does documentaries better than WWE when they do a real good one. Like they're so good, and this one is one of the best they've ever done. It's phenomenal, and yeah, he, having him narrate it was just top notch. And yeah, I think I got I, my eyes watered maybe three times during this whole documentary. So once every forty minutes, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, y'all got a chance to watch it yet? I, have I haven't yet. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it sounds great. I do want to finish it. Um, or it was great what I've seen so far, but uh, just definitely should mention it here on our Undertaker sightings. Uh, Travis, was there anything else uh, oh, missing? I sent you something about the Miz. I forgot what it was. What did the Miz say about Taker? He said something Put, about Taker. Putting him over. Oh yeah, maybe that was it. Just putting. Yeah, Miz was putting Taker over. I don't know what it was on, but never mind. Forget that. Scratch that from the record. So. <laughs> Well, uh, we're not. Oh, gonna... he says. Okay. Oh, he's talking about on Pat McAfee show at the yeah, next yeah. day, talking about how that was the best main event of all time, and he says, you know, it had to be Taker because, like you said earlier, JV, that he is the final ball. He's the locker room leader. He's the sheriff. He's the one you got to prove yourself to. Uh, so him giving, uh, kind of basically giving Cody almost like this, like the same handshake that he gave Cena backstage in O2. Oh, you know, yeah. like it's yep. signifying that you know, he's giving Cody the seal of approval that you're the guy, you know? So that was what Miz was saying. So Miz gets crapped on a lot, but he's a good dude. <laughs> yeah, he is. <laughs> Taker, Taker's got that connection with Dusty Rhodes, too. Yeah. His first match, Survivor Series 90. Yeah. He's up there. Dusty Rhodes was on the other side of the ring. And then uh, his manager for that match, Brother Love, gets to come out there after the main event of WrestleMania. <laughs> gets to put in the ring. That was crazy. Uh, all right, well, let's take our time traveling, Hearst. We're going to take it back to Thursday, April 29th, 1999. And uh, Thursday, Raw Thursday, Thursday, SmackDown. <laughs> Thursday. <laughs> now, uh, um, we're going to watch the main event of Thunder first, folks. Uh, and we're going to do season two, episode 17 of Thunder. Chow's so Travis excited. Is Jack over there. <laughs> um, <laughs> If you care to watch it along with us, we're going to start at one hour, 19 minutes and 40 seconds. So one hour, 1940 on that uh, uh, episode of Thunder. Give everybody out there listening a chance to queue it up. Um, if you uh, were if you were like us and you weren't watching this that night or maybe you missed it somehow, uh, maybe you were watching um must see TV on NBC because on that <laughs> night uh, I looked it up. They had new episodes of Friends, Will and Grace, Frasier, and oh, Veronica's Seinfeld. Closet. Yeah, Seinfeld ended the year before. Yeah. Veronica's Closet. Oh, how did Kirstie Veronica's Alley. Closet make it to Thursday night? Must see TV. Um, ABC, you had America's <sighs> Funniest Home Videos on. Yeah. Um, was that still Bob Saget or was that? I think so. John Fugel saying. 
Could have been him, yeah. <laughs> but that era. Um, on a Thursday night? On Thursday night. Uh, over on CBS, oh. you had Diagnosis Murder with Dick Van Dyke. <laughs> a classic. And then uh, on the WB, you had the Wayans Brothers, the Jamie Foxx Show, and the Steve Harvey Show. So, hey, WB was where it was at at that solid time. Solid lineup. Who was their market, yeah. you think? <laughs> I don't know. I love Steve Harvey show. I was a fan of Steve I do Harvey. Yeah, he he the on the WB. Yeah. <laughs> How about Fox? What was Fox showing? Um, why did I not have? Fo- uh, I think they had a movie night or something. Oh, um, Thursday. Yeah, they were like, we're going to lose. Let's put a movie on. They gave up. <laughs> Fantasia. Uh, Robocop <laughs> 2. <laughs> yes. If you wanted to go see a movie if on Robo Thursday Cops night, Robocop was on. I probably didn't watch watch this. A Veronica's closet. What do you guys think uh, was in the theaters in April of '99? Oh, '99 is one of the best years of movies. Um, well, she's she's all that. I'm gonna oh, guess she's you're close. Matrix. Matrix was the number one oh. movie in the country this week. Oh, ah, you nailed it. Yep, Blair Witch. Where which one? Not yet, was it? Not yet. Well, nope. 99, February 99, right? I think. It was yeah, definitely 99. 99. It was definitely know. 99. I don't remember what month. Uh, 99 is so good. Yeah, so, the Matrix was in theater. We had 10 Things yeah. I Hate About You. And then Mom, uh, Never Beauty? Been Kissed. Oh, Never Been Kissed. Okay. So not She's All That, but definitely. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> same same idea. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Never Been Kissed, She's All That, whatever. Same thing. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Life with Eddie Murphy and uh, uh, Martin Lawrence. Was it Martin Lawrence? Is he the other one in that? Oh, is that the yeah. prison movie? The prison movie. Yeah. <laughs> it probably <laughs> was at some point. Oh, the prison movie, though, right? <laughs> yeah, they're, they're pr- yeah. Yeah, that's right. Um, what did they take? Pl- uh, yeah, whatever. That doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> or if you were listening to the radio instead of watching TV, uh, a- any guesses as to what the top three songs in the country on the Billboard Hot oh, 100 were? Backseat? Nope. Uh, hit me, baby, one more time. It was not in nope. the top three. But it was, it was and on uh, my name is by Eminem. Oh yeah, Eminem was up there, right? That was on the charts, but it wasn't top three this week. Was Lint uh, Biscuit? Right. No. So April. April. So, uh, so number both of those three songs I said came out in February. Number three early, was January. "Every Morning" by Sugar Ray. Ah. Uh, Number two up, babe. Don't was say a word. <laughs> exactly. <I'm> sorry. <laughs> Number two was "Believe" by Cher. Oh, oh, that. that was good, Travis. Holy moly! <laughs> yeah, that's a hell of a, a hell of you gotta a cover shit. that. Bro. Yeah, you got that shit voice. <laughs> You just don't close your mouth. You just keep it open the whole time. Like, oh! <laughs> yeah. That's really yeah. freaking good. <laughs> we'll see if you can do number one. Uh, and I hated no- that song, but that's good. Yeah. <laughs> number I one was that. No Scrubs by TLC. Number uh, one ooh, song. Travis, there. No Scrubs. Scrub is a guy that thinks he's black. I can't sing like them, though. How about No Pigeons? Also, How about No Pigeons? No Pigeons. No pigeons. <laughs> I don't want No Pigeons. <laughs> <laughs> I hadn't thought about that in 25 yeah. years. Yeah, no scrubs, wow. man. <laughs> All right, uh, favorite, for... favorite TLC member? Uh, I guess uh, Left. No, no, I like Chili. T Boss. T Boss. I like Left Eye. Yeah. All right, we're well, moving on. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Let me run down this Thunder card uh, before we get to the main event. Um, Wait, did Left Eye have AIDS? Uh, one of them did. I think so. <laughs> One she of them died, did, right? Lisa she, she left. Was it? Yeah, I think she died of it. Left eye, right? Yeah, so, um, she, she died in like a the fire. Yeah. Oh, it was like house oh. fire. Oh, like yeah, yeah. Die she didn't it. die in the fire though, did she? What are we she talking about? Kidding. I don't <laughs> know. Let's ask Kurt Loader. Yeah. Uh-huh. Kurt Loader would know. He's going MTV yeah, News Kurt update. All right, give us the rundown. This is off the rails. Back to thunder. Back to thunder. Thunder. Hit was, it, Shivani. Uh, yeah, no, Madden shirt on not right Shivani. <laughs> not on this night. We have Mike Tanay and Larry Zabisco in commentary, and uh, at Penn State University, State College. Um, and dude, uh, you you guys will see it on here, but they did not do 
anything to hide the fact that this was not sold out. Oh, like, yeah. like, the entire upper bowl <laughs> is empty and there's like no covering on there. It, it looks rough. But uh, Nitro, the, the couple days before this was the episode uh, we were talking about a little bit before we went on where uh, Ric Flair's in the mental institution and then uh, they had two world title changes on the same night. Yes. Uh, DDP we talked about that. The lost the episode. title and then, yeah, won the title back on the same yeah. night. Uh, we had a nice opener. Booker T retained the TV title against Kurt Hennig uh, when Stevie Ray interfered on Booker T's behalf uh, against his will. So they're kind of – Stevie Ray's trying to recruit Booker T into the NWO, Ooh. but Booker T doesn't want to go. And it was a Hit nice little – with that slapjack? He's had him with the slapjack, yeah. <laughs> the exactly. slapjack? Suckers got to know. <laughs> and Kurt Hennig had just come back after like eight months off or something like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it was a decent little match. Um, hardcore Hack and Chastity came yes. out, and Chastity, Chastity, he told Hack he should challenge Kevin Nash to a hardcore match tonight. And <laughs> Hack said, "Absolutely, let's do it." Hardcore Hack, <laughs> I loved Hack. I was a big Sandman fan when he came to WWE. I was a huge <laughs> Hack fan. He was a Hack, but I loved it. Dude. It had an action figure. It was awesome. Well, <laughs> loved it. Uh, Buff and came Chastity. out. Oh yeah, I love Chastity. I'll tell you that. <clears throat> Buff came out and cut a promo dressed as Scott Steiner and called himself the Big Bad Doo Doo Daddy and said <laughs> <laughs> he said Scott Steiner should spend some more time watching BET to find more lines to steal for his promos <laughs> which was a heck of an insult whoops yeah um, this is a real match Stevie Ray defeated Lightning Foot Jer- Jerry Flynn on it, this oh. episode of Thunder no way Jerry Flynn was the man Oh, well, Stevie lightning Ray. Uh, Stevie yeah, he had Ray, a lightning foot the th- on the thunder. <laughs> he <brought laughs> the, Jerry Flynn bringing the thunder. Stevie Ray needed interference from Horace Hogan, Brian Adams, <laughs> Horace and, Hogan. and Scott Holy. Norton to defeat Jerry Flynn. See? See what I'm talking about? That was his Cody Rhodes. All five Rhodes of moment. those people interfered. It was a, a Avengers <laughs> moment. Yeah. <laughs> Dollar Tree Avengers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Get them, dude! Oh, I need those guys. The NWO. I need that, I need that scene with like the Avengers music playing over it. <laughs> those guys. The NWO is so dead. Yeah, it's so <laughs> yeah. sad. Um, Hack and oh. Kevin Nash had a legit hardcore match. This was pretty. I awesome remember this match. To watch. Oh. Uh, wow. Nash powerbomb Hack through a table to win. Yeah. It was crazy. I mean, Nash was taking ladder shots and kendo stick shots. It's a crazy match. Um, then Bam Bam Begalow, he came out and cut a promo. So you want to keep the hardcore festivities going. And that's when he challenged DDP to that world title match with hardcore rules. And, uh, then Goldberg defeated Ming with the jackhammer. And just like, uh, Dang. just, I mean, these guys are just throwing stiff shots at each other for five minutes. It was pretty fun to watch. And then, uh, Randy Savage, uh, what up much? Um, he had just come back with this character pretty recently. Yeah. I love uh, it. Uh, with with his harem of women, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Miss Madness and Medusa and Gorgeous George, he defeated the Disciple uh, in 1999. Not talking about like de- 89 <laughs> Saturday Night's main event from yeah. 89. That's a real yeah. match that happened in WCW, and that sets us up for our main event. So, uh, any thoughts on that card? This is exactly wow. why I wanted to do this tonight hmm. because I wanted to run through that card and just talk about the zaniness that was WCW at 99. So anyway, oh, that was a fun trip down memory lane right there. All right, I was I was glad Alex that you asked us to be on because I would never watch this otherwise. So, <laughs> <laughs> so like, all right, cool, something I would never watch. Let me check I, it out. <laughs> I enjoyed going back through it. It was surprisingly fun. Um, yeah, I like watching. Stuff I haven't seen in a while, yeah. especially like the late '90s era, because yeah, dude, it's 25 years ago. Now. Yeah, it's wild. Nice. And it's like old. this time period for WCW '99, like I'm either out of this or haven't seen it. I'm like I don't remember. Well, this will be fun. I definitely don't remember this main event, so this will be fun to watch here. Uh, so one hour, 19, 40 seconds here. Um, Travis, you traditionally give us the countdown, so I will let you do that, and uh, hopefully we'll all hit it <coughs> close to the time. same time. And yeah. if not, we can always reset, but uh, let's give it a shot. 
All right, and I'll just go three, two, one, play. We'll push it on play. All right, uh-huh. and three, two, one, play. All right, we got the sparkly. Oh, we got some pyro. And some main event pyro here. We got Tanae as the lead commentator, too, and he sucks, by the he's way. He's not good. I, I think he got a lot better when he was, like, in TNA and stuff, but he's not great on this night. All right, what do you guys think yeah. of the set right here? I like the set. I like it. Me I too. like it, too. The set's, the set's decent. Pyro's taking over the set, though. <laughs> it makes, but it, it, this, it makes this, even this main event is, what, DDP versus Bam Bam? It, it, it feels like a big deal because of what they're, how they're presenting it right now, you know, with the oh, yeah. and stuff. Mm-hmm. So, I'll tell you what I, I love is the new, like, the minimal set on Raw and SmackDown. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I, it's such a nice change of pace. Makes it look so cool and different. There's old Bam Bam. Now, uh... Bam Bam never really did anything with Stone Cold. What do you guys think a Bam Bam Stone Cold feud would have looked like? Uh, yeah. I would have loved it. There's something, yeah, there's something that could have been there. Unfortunately, he wasn't around. He was in ECW right. at the time. Bring out that dumpster. Trash can, yeah, dumpster full of toys, as JBL <laughs> would call it. <laughs> We got some Kendo sticks, some trash cans, and who knows what else. I tell you what, I, I was going to say a Stone Cold and Bam Bam feud. Stone Cold would have torn him up on promos. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, That's Bam Bam point. could not. A match would have been nice. He could not compete with that. No, but a match That's would have been point. nice. Yeah. Yeah, he would have tore him up, making fun of those tattoos on his head. He would have. He would have had some good line. <laughs> what? Like, you got a super on tattoo on your head. <laughs> You got one tattoo. What? Two tattoos. What? There's the man right <laughs> there. I love when he wore the belt backwards and <laughs> spun it around. That's a good look. So now tell bring me, back. you guys may not have loved WCW, but you you got to be a DDP fan, right? Oh yes. Yeah. The people's, yep. the real sure. people's champion. Yep. I especially don't like this music that they're covering over the. Uh, oh yeah, it's yeah, oh, baloney. Right. I'm like, why does this seem lamer than it should be? <laughs> he doesn't have his music. So it should be lame because WCW. But it's lame. It wasn't <laughs> real music that they, they stole the music that wasn't even the real music. <laughs> no, oh, yeah. It smells play. like Teen Spirit. Right. Yeah. It was it's like a, a triple fake, fake like version. Spirit. It was awesome, though. <laughs> well, I Self think. Self high five. I think. Self high five. He yep. was kind of like a tweener at this point, or maybe he was fully a heel. You know, after, like, we're just a few months away from him you know doing all the stuff with carl malone and, and uh and against rodman and hogan batch of the beach 98 but he had turned sort of heel at this point so I, I think maybe he had dropped that music for a little while and i don't know what his character really was at this point i don't really recall I'll tell you what music of his sucked it was his wwf music oh yeah for sure it was Oh, they're, they're, cool. Dude, they're just going at it slugging away to start it's off. hardcore man Ooh, he did a ray mysterio bounce off the middle rope yeah, DDP's like a big boy. He's a tall dude, guy. Yeah. DDP looks great. He looks awesome. He's a phenomenal shit. He's 107 years old right there. <laughs> <laughs> dude, he started wrestling at 35. I know. That's man. insane. He's in WCW at 38. Yeah. Right. Or he won the title at 38. Something yeah. Like that. Yeah, yeah. It's crazy. So there's, there's st- we still got a one year of eligibility left, Travis. That's right. <laughs> You're about to turn 38 in a couple of days. I am. So. We, yeah. These guys oh. are boys in real life. So, Jersey. Bam Bam talked about that in his promo. He yeah, said they, Asbury Park. Yep. Said they grew up together. Now they're going to okay. duke it out. Never knew that. Yeah. I don't know if that was a shoot or not, but he, he said it in the promo at least. Yeah, I didn't hear to, that when I watched this. <clears throat> I listened to a DDP podcast a few years ago. And he talked. It was shortly after Bam Bam died. And he talked about how they legit knew each other and knew him from the clubs and knew he was wrestling and uh when he started wrestling he, he got in touch with bam bam about some stuff so yeah i always liked bam bam as a kid love him like he just jumped off the screen to me yeah and uh i mean you made a good point mike like he would, his promos are not the best he definitely would have got eaten alive by stone cold but just like i mean the freaking tattoos on his head and his size yes. and the way he moved around for his size oh, i always even though he was a heel, as he was a bad guy, I still got excited when he came on the screen. He was fun to watch. 
Yeah, <laughs> like 200 and what episodes is this? 45? So 241 episodes ago, we talked about, you know, how that's one of the things that got us into wrestling. It's like, it's like seeing a superhero on your screen. You know, they, they, those guys that are over the top, like Sting and, a, and, a, and an Undertaker, they, they jump off the screen to you. Well, he's another one, man, because like, he's so, it's just so, Ooh. oh, yeah. Uh, a, trash can in the back. His head's tattooed. His head, yeah, his head's <laughs> his tattooed. Freaking that, head's tattooed. That says something, you know? You're like, hey, even if you're flipping channels, you're like, whoa, what's this guy doing? So, you know, it's something cool. Yeah, and even Ooh, before it was just, <laughs> oh, what a way to come back. <laughs> How's that time that perfect? It's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> but another thing that Bam Bam did going back to like 87, 88 WWF, he's doing car wheels in the ring. Yes. Too. Yes. yes. <laughs> Moon so, And then I don't know if you guys remember or you played the Nintendo game. I know JV and I played the yeah. Nintendo game, but Bam Bam was one of the. Main guys in that game. <laughs> this table has bananas on it. <laughs> game sucked, but yeah. Yeah, why are those bananas there? Yeah, what's up with the bananas? bananas on it? You know, Bam Bam was a real pro. He'd open one of those and eat it before he did, <laughs> did a move. Right. Oh, this is a ju- oh, him. this is a gimmick right here. Oh, yeah. I'll make him slip on a banana peel. Oh please! Oh. He threw a cooler at him a few minutes ago. Yeah, but the banana's <laughs> got to stay. All right, Bam Bam is up on top of the side stage. This is jump. great. Love Big splash through. Come on, here we go. Oh, <laughs> the table wins. Oh, he break. slipped on the banana peel. Yeah, he slipped on it. <laughs> <laughs> we got a plastic. What do they got? Platters? Yeah. Pl- <laughs> Cater, oh, catering platter. Catering platter. So you see the okay. funeral of the Baptist cool. Church. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Elbow. Pinfalls count anywhere. Oh, kicked out. I, I tell you what, I loved hardcore matches in 1999. Yeah. Oh, I couldn't, I couldn't uh, have enough of them. How could you what? not, Federation? You couldn't watch wrestling if you didn't like hardcore matches. <laughs> right? <That's true>. Yeah. <laughs> also, I was going to say, was ECW on TNN at this point? Did they come? Oh, no, that was the fall, wasn't it? It was in the fall. Yeah, later, you and I, I watched later in the year. Together. I remember watching that at your house, Alex. That was an awesome night. <clears throat> yeah, it would have been fall of 99. Yeah. On TNN. The Nashville Network. Nashville Network. <laughs> not, <laughs> not what it is now. The Nashville Network. Yeah, weird, huh? That's the only city I know that has its own network. That's true. <laughs> is there like the Denver you know, Network right. or you know, LA or something bigger than Nashville? The Nashville Network. NAD 316. There we go. <laughs> nice side. Dude, so, so many Why signs. don't we use that word anymore? Mad, yeah, kicked in a nad. Oh, yeah. You guys teach. Who says we don't say that anymore? <laughs> I never hear anyone say that. No, that's shame. It's, it's a like a Beavis and Butthead I've thing. I've heard say that since '99. Like yeah, it Beavis and Butthead. <laughs> oh, speaking of Beavis and Butthead, great SNL sketch. Yeah. Oh <laughs> yes, <laughs> Ryan Gosling as Beavis. <laughs> yeah, you know what was disappointing? Not to be a Debbie Downer. They no, go for it. Uh, well, they didn't attempt to do a per unless I missed it at the end. They didn't even attempt to try and do their voices. They did no. the laugh. No, they the did the laugh. Yeah. They did the laugh. Yeah. Yeah, I wanted to see them like. I wanted a voice too. Yeah. <laughs> but it was. So it was that was, yeah, I, I think that, that was part of the humor though. That no, the characters were like, me. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I think last I checked, uh, it had 8.5 million views uh, on YouTube uh, already. Uh, cool. Like like three days so, after they had. Cool. <laughs> Here goes they falling headbutt. Action can work. What they should have done. Oh, beautiful! Uh, yeah. Falling headbutt. I love it. Last thing I'll say about that, Beavis and Butthead. No, keep talking about it. <laughs> Skit. <laughs> I'll keep talking about it. <laughs> they should have had Daria pop up in the background. <laughs> as, the cat, as, the, as the girl in the last part of the segment. Yeah. Should have been Daria with the glasses on and everything. The, <laughs> the, great. the King of the Hill pop at the end was good. That was good. Oh, that was good, too. I, I, I yeah. I appreciate that. that. Side slam from Bam Bam. I just, I could watch Bam Bam work forever. I love it. so good. This is a good match. Is this really? It's good? not five stars, but it's good. These guys aren't doing <laughs> anything lame. I love Alex. Like, is it a good match? Is no, I said it is good. good. I agree. Uh-huh. I, I do agree. <laughs> I mean, it's like it's not like I said. It's not. It's not Angle and Jericho going. You know, five stars. Or, look at this, dude. Dude, Spare oh, scissors, scissors from DDP. From DDP? Yeah. Kidding me? That's awesome. He's too old to be doing that. Yes. This Here is a go. world title match, by the way, right? 
The yeah. title is on the line. Yeah. The title's on the hardcore, line. my disc is clothesline, baby. Uh, great move from DDP. Oh, shades of the Texas tornado. Of course, uh, yeah. Last month's episode. Well, yeah. Discus punch, rather. But speaking of that, you guys seen the Iron Claw yet? We talked about that last month. Y'all seen Iron Claw the movie? I haven't. Iron Claw. I haven't seen it yet. Oh. Oh, I love uh, it. You know what? I need to see it's it. supposed to rain tomorrow. I'm gonna. I'm gonna do that tomorrow. <laughs> do it. Yeah. Because everyone says it's amazing. You Even might be. That don't like wrestling. You might be raining like tears wrestling. out of your eyes uh, after you watch yeah. it. Though. Yeah, it makes <laughs> you cry, huh? Yeah. I, I need got, that. I got I a little emotional. A yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. There's a couple spots for sure. That referee got spotted bifida by just getting touched by the. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Golly. Diamond cutter? Nope. What does it matter if the ref oh. goes down? It's a hardcore match. Well, you got to somebody oh, count the pin. Yeah, don't. That's what I always say. Like, what is this? Hardcore match, a referee's going to make these calls. Get well, out hate, of the way. I hate a rope break in a hardcore <laughs> match. That's, that's oh, what I yeah. can't stand. Bring the innocent. He's he's selling. Get out of here. Stop selling. <laughs> oh, here he goes. Greetings from You Asbury know Mike's going to have strong opinions on the referees. Yeah, he's, he's <laughs> acting like he's Earl over here. Exactly. Um, that should. Oh, here he goes. Off the Super top, flex? maybe? Oh, no. Nope. I, I thought it was going that way too, Travis. I think he thought he was too. <laughs> <laughs> it's like never mind, never mind. I mean, we got it. forty more seconds left. <laughs> yeah. You know, people made a big deal about WWF having that real estate in the middle of the ring with the Prime logo. Look at that real estate in the middle of that ring right there. <laughs> You're not wrong. It says thunder yeah. on it. It's thunder, and it's not doing any good. <laughs> <laughs> DDP with the low blow. What, oh, yeah. What did you guys feel about this new WCW logo? They just debuted in April, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I believe it was April 99. It was never a it fan. Took me, it took me a while to even know that it said WCW. Oh, wow. <laughs> I won't yeah. say what Eric that's how, calls it. That's how bad that is. In yeah. JV and I, in 1999, we were in graphic <gasps> designing Boom. for a shop in high school. Oh, yeah. Yeah, sure. Yeah. And, again... Maybe it's my own problem, but I didn't know that said WCW. <laughs> you probably could have made something better in high school. Oh, here comes the macho. That's the macho yeah. man. Bone saw McGraw. You really have to look yes. to find the WCW in that. Come You're on. Not yeah. wrong. You're not wrong. I did like I, I enjoyed that it was something different though. I kinda oh. liked when I liked when they changed up like a set of raw every like year or two or something like that. It was always fun. It updates something. So yeah, an I, update. Oh, look at that. Elbow drop leads to the pin. Dang. So, yeah, they're having their storyline is sort of some weird connection between DDP and Macho Man that uh, they're not really talking about or nobody understands quite yet. But, yeah, he helped him yeah. win on, on Nitro, and now he, he helps him win on, <laughs> on Thunder. Ooh, I don't remember Macho yeah. Man doing that. That's a new was. thing, brother. <laughs> 99. He came back. Yeah, they – um. when, when was he – uh? When was he bone saw the next year? When did that movie come out? 2000... 2002. 2002. Okay. Two, yeah. 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 First Spider Man. Two time heavyweight champion of the world. <laughs> Pretty good little match. I like that. That was a fun little yeah. match. That was good. Can't complain. No. Like I said, it's not going to get any match of the year candidate awards, but it's fun. Yeah. It's not going to hold a candle to. Triple H and The Undertaker versus The Rock and Stone Cold as far as star uh, power goes. No. Um, but, you know, a decent little display of what WCW was doing at the time. Um, but we're going to compare it, compare and contrast it here with, like I said, this pilot episode of SmackDown. So um, we are going to get all reset here and we'll invite all of you out there listening or watching to do the same. Uh, this is actually episode zero of SmackDown that we're going to be covering. That's what it's actually Don't called. Don't say here. that. <laughs> yeah. SmackDown season one. Um, and we're going to go to one hour, 16 minutes, 25 seconds. It's like a so, hidden track on an album in like the nineties, you know? Yeah, got it. <laughs> yeah. What's the, what's the time stamp? 25. 25. Okay. 25. I got to go back. It skipped ahead for me. So let me go. Yeah. Let me catch up. So, uh, I got 35 seconds on an ad. All right, yeah. Uh, well, well I'll, I'll go through the show <coughs> on this night as well. Um, now, uh, there we go. the the rumors 
going around, uh, speculation was that WWE wanted to launch an all divas show at this point in 1999, and that's Mother what SmackDown. Would be. Can what? you imagine? Sable, Bad idea. Ivory, uh, Tori, the Gold If they Mass. haven't done one now, and they actually have good wrestling, well, good wrestlers, they should not have done it 25 years ago. That'd been awful. Yeah, horrible. Yeah. But. Um, this is pretty historic. The WWE coming back to network television for the first time since the days of Saturday night's main event in yeah. the 80s and 90s, even though UPN maybe not on the same level as NBC, <laughs> but uh, still still a big deal. Yeah, uh, well, yeah there's a big difference. It's a weekly show compared to a quarterly mm-hmm. show, basically, mm-hmm. is what Saturday night's main event was on a real network. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, some, of the other, some of the other programming on UPN in 1999, we oh. had uh, the flagship Moesha. show was Moesha. Exactly. <laughs> Mo Fun, Mo Laughs, Moesha. That was the billboard in our hometown. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> the exit I get off of my parents' house back in the day. Yeah. Mo Fun, Mo Laughs, Moesha. <laughs> he also that had Star boy Trek. is mine. <laughs> <laughs> Another top hit. Star Trek Voyager was on UPN at this time. Uh, any start any trekkies in here? No, didn't they so. A dabble. Uh, a little but bit. Not, okay. Not hardcore yeah, though. Watched it, but yeah. I that's used to fair. like next generation a lot. Ah, that's fair. Uh the clueless TV show was on UPN at this time. I uh, had a couple seasons. <sighs> As if, dude. Yeah. Tiffany and, Stratton wore some uh, uh Oh yes. Some uh, an uh, outfit on SmackDown last week. There was a call back to that. There you go. Yeah. I was cool timeless. with that. It's timeless, dude. Cool, this is timeless. <laughs> Paul Rudd hasn't aged since that movie. That's a fact. It's yeah. Identical. <laughs> yeah. And then Love Boat, The Next Wave, was on UPN on, on Friday nights. So Risqué. Stiff Friday competition night. to smack down. Um, then they'd go on and get, uh, what was that claim? The PJs? The, the PJs? PJs yeah. was on there. Yeah. Uh, what was the one God, we used to, what was it? What you doing? What was that one? Mike, was like, uh, it was another cartoon. Yeah, it was a car- oh, Mike and Eddie. I don't know what it was. Anyway. The, the mullets, I think. The last mullets was on there. Episodes on UPN. Yeah. yeah. Um, Golly, just top notch programming. This is coming <laughs> off. <laughs> on, Sorry. One, yeah, 11625. 11625. Um, this is coming off Backlash. So Backlash had been the Sunday before this uh, with Rock and Austin and their oh, rematch. Great Backlash. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then Raw, right before this, was the unholy union of Ste- Stephanie and The Undertaker. And that abduction and Stone Cold ends up saving the day. So it was a big video package recapping all that on this episode. Uh, commentary. God, that was right after Backlash? That's crazy. It was the night after Backlash. Dang. Was it the match at your backlash? Uh, yeah, you could say that. that. Yeah, I your back- I'll wrestle you at the match at your backlash. Dude. That was wild. <laughs> Speaking of Stephanie, what did you guys think of Stephanie making the big return on night two? Good hat she had on. Oh, Hall of Fame. <laughs> yeah. ACW hat. Yeah. Hall of Fame. Two thumbs up, man. I'm all for Stephanie being back. Yeah. 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 I'm all for seeing her in the fold and along there with Triple H. Um, Oh, yeah, commentary on this night. Michael Cole and Jim Cornette, of all people, <laughs> as the commentary what? team on this night. Because when what? you think Attitude Era, you think James E. Cornette. That's right. <laughs> Dang. If I, I think this is when JR and the King are filming Man on the Moon with oh, Jim okay. Cornette. Wow. Yes, I think you're right. Because um, I can't think of any other reason why Corny would be there, but... Uh, he right. can always have that feather in his cap. Because he wasn't doing like the NWA stuff anymore at this point, right? Like in the WWF. Yeah, that no, was that, all that done. had been over for a yeah. while. I think he had done, he was doing maybe some shotgun Saturday night commentary yeah. or something okay. like that. And he, I guess he was on the booking committee. But um, yeah, he's here on commentary, oddly enough. Uh, Vince and Stephanie start off the show and they, they thank Stone Cold and Big Show and Ken Shamrock for uh, saving the day on Monday. And Stephanie talks about Undertaker inappropriately touching her and doing things against her will while she was kidnapped, which is uncomfortable uh, yeah. to watch and think about. <laughs> dad's right there. <laughs> With her dad right there. Um, 
Shane comes out. He's got the corporation, including the Mean Street Posse. And yes. uh, he the books boys. the main event of Stone Cold and Rock. And he asks who wants to face him. And, and Triple H raises his hand. And he says, all right, you need, we need a partner for Triple H. Are there any takers? And then immediately the lights go out. And uh, uh, it was, nice it was word play there. Huh? It's a good line. <laughs> Um, the Blue Blazer defeated Val Venus in the first match of SmackDown history. <laughs> oh, jeez. Wow. Write that footnote. Uh, this had run-ins from The Godfather, Jeff Jarrett, Deborah, and Nicole Bass all in a two-minute match. Nicole so Bass. that's what 1999 WWE Okay. Like. That's Was that worse. the Avengers thing? That's even worse <laughs> than the WCW Dollar Store Avengers, yeah. That's like the... I don't even know what that is. The yard sale Avengers. <laughs> the Russo Avengers right there. Worse. Um, this was going off a storyline where Godfather had won a match against Jeff Jarrett and Deborah was supposed to be a hoe for a night and he was trying to kidnap her to make him his hoe. And Godfather was the baby oh, nice. in that right. situation. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just to remind Different you what times, 1999 baby. was like. Different times, baby. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Big Show defeated Test uh, after hitting a drop kick and a choke slam in a 60 second match. <laughs> Big Show drop kick. All right. Big Show drop kick. <laughs> he got up for it. I, I dug it. Uh, the Rock came out. He cut. He's starting to cut his promo um, on the show. He coined the name for when he got interrupted by Stone Cold, and then Shane McMahon interrupts him and brought out the corporation. And then he brings out the Ministry of Darkness up on the stage. And this is the merger of the corporate ministry. Right. So this was kind of a huge moment. And it also just came out of nowhere with no real build to it. But still, it was a it was a massive deal, a massive change in the storyline right there. That's probably one of those Russo, we got to do something to get people coming back and know they can't miss the second show if we're going to have a second show. You know, which there you go. I mean, you guys covered it, Mike, JV. I mean, things were just moving so fast at this point in time. Yeah, things are flying by at this point. Which is one of the reasons Russo left in six months after this. He was he he couldn't be as creative as he wanted to be. He didn't feel like he could be do a good as good of a job doing twice the amount of work. Not that he was doing a great, but you know, whatever. The ratings said he was doing a good job. I'm just saying, like creatively, it was what it was. But you know. I don't right, it's I, a lot of pressure. I, I understand where he's coming from when you put that much pressure on yourself like he did. So Yeah. And then Vince McMahon tells him to go get a nanny. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. 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 <laughs> I don't know. Get, get a nanny if you wanna yeah. you know, take care of your kids. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Things were different back then. Yeah. Uh, and speaking of, D Lo defeated Draws by DQ after Prince Albert interfered and then Draws and D'Lo tried to pierce D'Lo's tongue, uh, but thankfully Mark Henry made the save to a huge pop. Mark Henry got the pop of the night making the save for D'Lo. Coming out in like a uh, Teddy Long suit running nice. out there. It, it was great. Uh, X-Pac and Kane beat the New Age Outlaws uh, to retain the tag team titles after some miscommunication between Billy Gunn and Road Dog. So some feuding in DX. And then the Brood came out and Gangrel cut the worst promo of all time that I've ever heard in my entire life. Uh, <laughs> they're getting interviewed by Doc Hendricks in the ring. And it's the, they're saying it's the first time the brood has ever spoken. And I, I don't think Gangrel has ever spoken, period, in real life um, in this promo. But it's her. You got to go back and watch it. It's the first time ever speaking in public <laughs> in his human history, for shoot. <laughs> Um, they give Doc Hendricks a bloodbath, and I think that leads to him teaming with the Hardy Boys here, mm -hmm. following up on that. Uh, Ken Shamrock and Bradshaw have a street fight. Wow. Ken took it literally. He came out in his street clothes. Uh, he had jean shorts and T-shirt and stuff. And to me, Ken Shamrock looked less intimidating in his street clothes than he did. Like, <laughs> There was something about him, man. He just looked goofy in his t-shirt and jeans. Like, not like... He's so jacked. Like, yeah. he, he looks less intimidating when he's got his t-shirt on. But uh, he uh, choked out Bradshaw with a baseball bat to win that one. And then Man Mankind defeated Boss Man with the help of Big Show and Test. And that was the start of the union. 
right there. The union. The union. Ugh. Up yours. Horrible. <laughs> <laughs> so just off the bat, just off the cards, the I mean, what, what you ought to respect, Shane? Uh, what card sounded better, <laughs> the Thunder card or the SmackDown card? SmackDown. Uh, it's close. Travis, <laughs> Travis is going Thunder. <laughs> Dude, I can't stand half the people you just named on the WWF card. <laughs> it's terrible. But you, you, so you're taking Horace Hogan and Vince? No, uh, they're, both, they're both awful, dude. Jerry <laughs> Flynn? <laughs> they're both, no, you're right. They're awful. <laughs> both of both nights. Save for the main event, they're both crap nights. Yeah. But no, more, WWF had more storyline progression with the. That's a big deal, the corporate ministry. There's a lot a going huge on. Huge deal. Yeah. So I'd, I'd probably, you know, in hindsight, SmackDown was the better show for sure. <laughs> well, let's compare the main events here. So uh, what I said, one sixteen twenty five on it. episode zero of SmackDown. Are we ready? Do we all have it? I'm good. Yep, we I'm good. ready. All right. We'll go three, two, one, play and hit it. And three, two, one, play. This oh. clearly, clearly the raw set, right? Yeah, so they either taped this right after, after Raw, Raw or, or the next day. Um, yeah, is this, is this the My Time music? I have mine muted. Or what is the corporate corporate music? Never mind. They're, they're coming out to No Chance. No oh, chance. No Chance. I love these Triple H pants. I love when he had those. I don't know why. I was a big fan of those pants. I love the, trunks. the sweater vest on Rodney and Pete. Yes. That would have where's, been literally what, what Travis and I were wearing in 1990. Oh, the next day we were wearing that to school. Yeah. It would have come from Gap Kids for me. We, <laughs> we were huge preps. Till, till 11th grade. I was so small. So, yeah. Have, have, have either of you guys ever worn a sweater vest in your life? Oh, yes. Okay. I have. Right. I, I was wearing a sweater vest up until like 2009. <laughs> I wouldn't yes, have boy. thought that. I would not have guessed that. <laughs> and I, I thought it was like appropriate teacher wear. So I was like, yeah, I'll wear this one of it. Nothing wrong with it, dude. And then uh, one, no, one of the female teachers made fun of me. So I was like, oh, shit, okay. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> 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 you got shank out of your vest. I can't wear that anymore. Oh, you can't vest shame, That's dude. sad. I, can't vest I got shame. vest shame. Yeah. <laughs> like, hey, vest I look good. Man. Look, Tank is wearing a vest right now. He's the man. Oh, he wasn't in style <laughs> for the female anymore. I He's got the, the Amish devil goatee. Oh, the eyes roll oh. back. Oh, that yeah. Shane and big boy Paul Bear. Yeah, extra large. Oh, my. Biggest, Biggest size. boy, yeah. Biggie size. <laughs> Remember when Wendy's did that in 99? Biggie, Biggie size, size. Baby. Biggie size me. Yeah. I don't know how fat America is. Biggie <laughs> size everything. <laughs> oh, we got Ooh, a mini. Double inside. fingers. The double crap. fingers there. There we go. Can you imagine going out of your way to bring a midi inside? To the crowd, how how big of a midi wow. fan do you have to be? Mark, dude, <laughs> right there in the front, bro. Yeah, I love it. That's hardcore. Midi and hive rise up. Is that what it says? That's, That's what I said. Oh, <laughs> there he is, the final boss. Here we are here, twenty five years how ago. Different his body is now. Look how different everything is with him. Yeah. I do miss those sideburns, though. Golly. That's my inspiration. Yeah. Oh, I thought you meant the guy that had the rock written on his chest in Sharpie. No, that guy's just... sideburns were good, too. No, those... The rock sideburns were culturally iconic. Oh, yeah. I wish you'd bring him back. Wish he had... He's still bald, though? No hair? Just yeah, just sideburns. Side <laughs> <laughs> just that grows cool. it out. <laughs> From Moana to Moana live action. <laughs> Mo- Does anybody else think it's Simon? hilarious that he has like a shampoo line at Target now? Does? He has no Does body he? hair? Yes. Yeah. He's been He's blowing hairless. up on his Instagram. He's like a seal and he has yeah. yeah. Papa, no hair. Papa Tui. Uh, hell. Yep. Look at <laughs> Trip- I like Triple H's logo on his pants. I I just this era Triple H, man, I loved it. I love two thousands Triple oh, H. There's the glass bird. There we go. There we go. The man. Dude, you just looking at this show right now, the intensity between the guys fighting, oh, the intensity yeah. of the crowd, it's just in a different world than WCW at that time. It is. Yeah. I mean, I'm I'm a WCW mark, but there's no doubt when you look at these two back to back, it's just there's no doubt that these this one won the war, you know. Look at this, man. It's just 
It's awesome. Star power is off the charts. Yeah. It's awesome. Stone Cold's only got one knee brace. <laughs> yeah. Just a young whippersnapper. That's right. <laughs> yeah, just the young whip. Yep. <laughs> he only had one bad knee. Undertaker looks great, too. Undertaker yeah. looks yeah. good. Yeah, yeah. Yep. I was going to say. I like his... I like the slick back hair, the little pony on top. Oh, yeah. He, he's even following the rocks. Yeah. <laughs> uh, side, sideburn gimmick. He's there. got some strong yeah. sideburns. I don't know. I, I, think, I think those are painted in, though. Ooh, <laughs> I don't think, color did. Oh, the color is definitely from a box. Yeah, I don't think yeah. he fully has it. <laughs> no, that color is from a box, dude. I will disagree with Travis there. I, don't, I do not like these Triple H oh. tight pants. I love when he had these. I, I, it took me a while to get you. When he went to the trunks, yeah, the, like the short trunks, I was like, what is happening? I just liked his, I liked this stuff. But then, like, now I can't not see him in the trunks. It's weird looking back. Yeah. Mm. Like Jericho, I, I always prefer Jericho in, in tights. But now he Me too. never has them on. Well, he might do this Lionheart thing he does in AW, but. These two guys, two years later, be a two-man power trip. Oh yeah, yeah. Unfortunate how that ends. April, but April of nine, April of one. I did like that little run. And Triple H, he had, he was the young guy. He, I mean, he had not been oh, world yeah. champion yet at this not time. Not till August, right? So this was really like looking back, you just see those four names, and you're like, oh yeah, four main eventers. But at the time, I mean, Triple He's H was getting yet. a huge rub from being in a match like this. Oh yeah. Yes, you're right. This would be like, let's see, current. This would be like we got, oh, I don't know. If we had like Roman Reigns and Seth Rollins tagging against Cody Rhodes and then awesome Pete, Dunn, Pete Dunn or something like that. Yeah. Somebody, <laughs> I don't know if I'd go that far down the card. Pete okay. Dunn. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> um, Austin Theory, something yeah, like that. Right. Yeah. Austin um, Theory sounds about right on the ladder. Okay. Maybe like Chad Gable. Uh, I hope Gun- he gets a push. Gunther? But... Maybe no, Gunther? Well, he, he should be big. Um, <laughs> what a uh, feather in the cap for Rodney and Pete Gass to say, that was in the main <laughs> event of the first SmackDown. Right here, <laughs> right yeah. On the outside of the crowd. Dude, what, hey. what the heck's Joey at? What about? a wild life those guys have led. <laughs> yeah. What a wildlife these guys. I mean, these guys were all like these four like legit rivals, like back behind the scenes, you know, all clawing for that top spot. Oh yeah. Sure. Like in real life. <laughs> yeah. Taker been there for nine years. Austin, you know, well, the other three only other three all debuted in ninety six, right? Or Austin. Triple was H late was ninety five, but yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Austin, I mean all ninety five, ninety six ish. All around yeah. that. Yeah, it's crazy. Austin's first TV appearance was 96, but yeah. filmed in 95. Yeah. Yeah. Did you guys see the Mark Canterbury sign that popped I up in did. the front row? I didn't just know it's going to see it. <laughs> Henry Godwin, baby. <laughs> Who's bringing that sign? Who's bringing these signs? <laughs> I tell you what, uh, it was a couple, of Raws, a couple of Raws before WrestleMania this year. They had They zoomed in on signs and stuff. In the crowd, and, and like during Raw, and we're like encouraging people to bring your signs and some of that. So I'm hoping that's coming back. I hope so too. It was never the same as it was oh, back then. Double down. Because you can't hold your phone up while you're holding up a sign. At yeah, same exactly. Time. exactly. Put your phone down and hold enjoy your the moment. <laughs> hold your sign. Look at this, man. This is at Austin. Yeah, he's so intense. Austin looks great. He does. Look at he's Paul, good. too. Looking it's, at the again, crowd. Star power, dude. It's yeah. awesome. Brady. China's hey, out there. Hey, China's there, too. Right? Yeah, so I'm saying China's oh, out yeah, there. Oh, yeah, China's there. She's all there. Oh, here we go. And Jim Rock Cornette. Off. Man, James C. Cornette. <laughs> One of these things is not like the other. Still an icon, though. <laughs> but Michael Cole, you know, he's, you know, he sucked at this time, but how great was he at WrestleMania? Oh, and how great has go. he been like ever since Vince left? He's been great since he's been able to be himself, basically. Yep. Yeah. Even when Vince was there and he had Pat with him, he was good. 
But now that Uh-oh. the you know the cuffs are off with Vince gone, he's even better. But him and Pat together are the best, dude. So the corporate ministry is out now. The union is Holy out. Holy moly! There's Golly. Midian. That guy in the crowd is excited to see Midian. You know who's the best on Ron commentary? Simmons? WrestleMania was Snoop Dogg. <laughs> Snoop Dogg was excellent on commentary. <laughs> like a big show. He'd only been there for two months at this point. Test with the Fubu jersey. Oh yeah, he's oh, probably a big fan of Fox WB. <laughs> big Moesha fan. <laughs> big fan of the WB. <laughs> <laughs> big boo. From Undertaker to Austin, probably wearing some lugs too. Oh, definitely. Lugs. <laughs> some stacker tubes. <laughs> and I think this is this is like the pairings for Over the Edge. Yeah. I think Triple H and Rock go off, and then Austin and Undertaker are going to fight at the next pay per view. Mm-hmm. Choke slam, maybe. Austin. Yeah, because they're going to fight. Yeah, that's where Taker wins a title, right? But oh. it's overshadowed, obviously, by the Blue Blazer. Yeah. Ooh! Oh, Ooh. some awful McMahon oh. punches. That was Horrible fun. punches. <laughs> this is the good. night that Shane learned to throw potatoes, I bet. Because they say, <laughs> everybody says now he punches you for a shoot when he punches. So. Oh, good that was. Heaven. <laughs> Thank you, Taker. Oh. <laughs> just laid him out. That was a clean chair shot. <laughs> but this like, is I know. Bef- that was a nice chair are. shot. This is before the higher power though stuff, right? This yeah, so that's coming in a couple weeks. Yeah. Yes. Which you know, none of this actually makes sense in hindsight. None of it. They're supposed to be in collusion. And he Cahoots. just murdered him with a chair shot. I think he's legitimately <laughs> unconscious. <laughs> yeah. Hey, look at those side runs one more time. <laughs> Take they in. did come from Painted. like party city. They're like stuck on it. <laughs> he peeled them off. He peeled them back off. And stuff. Yeah. Shame, man, being his unconscious father. Been, he's been dreaming of this day for twenty five years. Dude, his eyes have been closed this whole time. <laughs> his body is not moving. He's not. There. Vince is a good seller when yeah. it comes to that. I don't know he's if he's that good. Dead. He's not good. Uh, he's done it. Oh, he's definitely animated. Little salute from Stone Gold to Shane. Salute. salute your shorts. Was Shane around salute. during WrestleMania weekend? Yeah, you didn't nah, see him. I didn't, I didn't see him at Hall of Fame right there. What was he doing? Nice stunner. Oof. Look at this crowd going <laughs> wild. <laughs> They're electric. Yeah. I love it. And this is a small crowd, right? Yeah, this is like a civic yeah, it center. It doesn't in some look like a small big... town. Dude, yeah, it's compare like those guys in the front row to like the people who sit in the front row. Nowadays, oh, who, like, oh, don't react to anything. Yeah, they think they're the they ones running the show sometimes. Yeah. Yes, yes, they think people want to see them. They right. drive me crazy not reacting. I talked about that at WrestleMania when you were here. I was yeah, like, you did. Just if you pay that money, go go nuts, dude. Oh, wow. I was going yeah. more nuts at my house with my kids <laughs> than those guys were at Rainy. Yeah, the, the people in the front row then look like Vikings. People in the front row today are like <laughs> guardian <laughs> angels. <laughs> Yeah. Wow. They're Great like, comparison. we have to approve of this show. <laughs> what we say matters. Yeah. They're like, like, well, actually, this is this is not how <laughs> oh, yeah. we wanted to play out. Yeah, two yeah. and a half stars, in my opinion. Steve Weiser all over Vince's face. Look at this crowd, man. Copyright nine and Titan Sports. Look, there oh, we did go, you see that hey, Bud Light can? The old yeah. school can. The old old Bud Light can? Yes. Yeah. Damn, oh I God. want one. That was a throwback right there. <laughs> I want one. <laughs> oh, I want to watch August 26, 1999 now. What's that, too? I know. <laughs> Tonight we're going to party like it's 1999, baby. <laughs> well, um, wow. I'm sure you guys would, could guess uh, SmackDown definitely outdrew Thunder on this night. Uh, yeah, SmackDown sure. scored a 5.8 Nielsen Mother rating. Goose. <laughs> Makes sense. <laughs> No eyes on the product at the time. I think, you know, the biggest shows on TV nowadays don't even get that. Um, Thunder did a 2.5, um, which would still be a huge rating in 2024. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, a little less than half of what SmackDown did. And uh, the week previously, Thunder did a 3.2. So they definitely lost some viewership yeah. due to SmackDown on there. Definitely took a chunk out of their viewers. Um and the I, Raw a couple days before this did a 5.9. So they're basically almost the exact same ratings for Raw and SmackDown. Everybody who watched Raw went over and watched SmackDown. Um, Crazy. 
it's a pretty interesting. Um, I watch I watched both shows uh, a couple days ago. I think I liked Thunder as a show a little bit more than I liked the SmackDown, but dude, that SmackDown main event was very was hot. Fun. Yeah. What did y'all think comparing the two? All right, I agree. Terrible. terrible. Who's terrible? Go ahead, JV. I, just, said, I don't think they're comparable. I think the oh. Raw main event just wins in every, checks all the boxes, and yeah. Thunders really just does it. Like, we, great, it was a good match, but not main event. Like, Bam Bam Bigelow and DDP. Yeah, not in the same universe. Yeah. Mike, what about you? Yeah, I, I agree. The main events are two totally separate things, but the shows as a whole, I I think Thunder was a better show because yeah, I did watch fun. both shows. Like uh, Thunder is better paced and it's just a better show at this point, point. and that's because SmackDown was new. Like yeah, they've been doing one, Thunder since was January of ninety eight. They've been right. doing it for a year and four months at this point. So right, WWE and they just bouncing off a of Nitro. Yeah. When does SmackDown get the fist? 2002. Oh, a couple I years. Think. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, one. one, maybe. Yeah. 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 Rhino oh, yes, one Gores, because Rhino Gore's Jericho, Jericho do, the, do the Ovaltron thing, <laughs> and then yeah, come back with the fist. Come back with the fist, and then, yeah. All right. Which, yeah, this is a this is a great way for SmackDown to start off, though. Oh, but then, heck yeah. But then, what comes of it? Nobody remembers it until August. <laughs> so. That's true. Yeah. But true. I, but looking back, very historic. Uh, everyone talks about The Undertaker. He main evented the first episode of Raw in 1993, but he also main evented the first SmackDown. So uh, I, I thought it was worth covering and worth looking back at on the show. Uh, Mike and JV, I'm so glad you guys could join us for tonight to be yeah, a part dude. of this. It was fun to hang out. Um, I'm sure everybody listening knows your whole deal, but uh, why don't you remind everybody about the Bottom Line Wrestling Cast? All right, well, we've done the Bottom Line Wrestling Cast for the past six years at this point, and we've covered the entire career of Stone Cold Steve Austin. Entirely. <laughs> like, Stone Cold Steve Austin is done. It's basically in our rearview mirror at this point. And we are now covering Stunning Steve Austin. And you know, we're kind of dragging through that. <laughs> but... <laughs> we had the Hollywood Blondes. Uh... Yeah, we did the Hollywood Blondes series. And now Stunning Steve, and we got through the first half of Stunning Steve, where he, where that led up to the Hollywood Blondes, and now we're getting into the second half of that after the Hollywood Blondes. So you know, we're we're taking a lot of time now. We put in our time. <laughs> well, you had a great uh, three sixteen day episode, uh, you know, last month with the look back at Kevin Owens and Stone Cold and their main event yeah. from WrestleMania. Uh, 38. That was fun to revisit that with you guys. And uh, I did look back in your catalog. You, you guys did a whole watch along for this episode of SmackDown back in September Again. of 2019, which is how I can't believe it's been that long. Yeah, oh, I think we did it with our, with our buddy Jay Free was on that one as that's well. Right. Oh, wow. That yeah. was a long time yeah. ago. Yeah. Uh, well, of course, everybody can get that on all the various podcast services. Um, they can follow you guys on social media. Um, you got the Extreme ECW Livecast out there as well. Yes, we got that going. That's uh, also available wherever you get your podcast. And we've covered 1993 through up to this point. For free episodes, you can get into 1996. But on the exclusive episodes which are available on the Book of the Territory $5 tier Patreon, we are now into 1997, which we're about a year and a half from the free episode. So we are covering that watch-along style. We do two episodes per episode. Yeah. And we do that along with our buddy Rick Beebe as well. So you're in the peak at ECW, man. 97, oh, 98, yeah, yeah, up. Ooh. So are you, are you yeah, right. First pay per view coming up. Quote the yeah. Raven. Are you going to do a big special for Barely Legal? Just yeah, Barely say. Legal is going to be broken up into two separate episodes. Okay. So we're going to we're going to do the first half and then break it up into another episode for a second half. Yeah. So yeah. that's our bread and butter. So that's kind of how we slowed down with 
with the bottom line wrestling cast is now we're focusing more on the Extreme W live cast. Well, bottom line wrestling cast not dead, just taking a little break. That's right. That's right. <laughs> a little bit out of the time. We we'll do some Stunning Steve episodes. We'll mix in some Stunning Steve and I mean uh, some of the Stone Cold special episodes. We were doing some uh, of those uh, variety packs. The variety packs. I enjoyed the like variety packs. Some more of those down the line. But yeah. Well, I was excited when one drops in my feed. You know, they're few and far between now, but I, I always enjoy them when they come out. And uh, I, I encourage all of our listeners, if you if you never listen to it, great episode we did last year on y'all's show covering the Stone Cold Metal album. Uh, yes. It's one well, of the most fun do... podcasts. <laughs> We're going to do Stone Cold Country. Soon. We got to do Stone Cold Country sometime. Ooh, that was going to be tough. <laughs> um, I'm looking, I'll do it. Travis, Travis, we gotta get you on that one. On the Stone All Cold right. Country. Yeehaw. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Austin main evented in three different 98, 2001, and then 2022. That's three. So if he had, yeah, if he'd had one in the, in the 2010s, he'd have been in the same boat with old Rocky and Taker. Maybe in the 2030s. He can I don't think anybody can do event. that. I think the only person that could possibly pull it off, I don't know, man, Orton or, or, or no, can Orton do it? Yeah. What's uh, Orton? He hasn't had no. one this decade. No, no. Well, uh, Lesnar could. Twenty thirties. I don't know if Lesnar will. I mean, <laughs> I we'll see what names. happens. There's a rumor he's coming back. Yeah, we'll That's see what happens. Enough. But he he probably could. Uh, yeah, we shall see. Um. Well, thanks, you guys, of course, for joining us. Always a blast to have y'all on. And uh, we, we try to get you on at least once a year uh, with our month with our yeah monthly episodes. Uh, so we always try to find an excuse to have you guys on. Y'all have been there supporting us from day one and you know, still shouting us out and supporting us. So we always appreciate that. And uh, who knows? At SummerSlam in Cleveland, I know there's been some preliminary talks. You know, maybe. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh shit. Travis, <laughs> it's okay. Travis gets suplexed. <laughs> Come on here. Wait. It happens every week now. Don't worry about it. <laughs> maybe, uh, maybe we'll see each other. Maybe we'll get to join each other at that uh, big event. <laughs> um, I forgot I, I have uh, wired ones on, so I pulled too far away. <laughs> Uh, I want to shout out our buddy Watch Along Tommy, um, a friend of the show, a Pod Street crew member. Check out his YouTube channel, Watch Along Wrestling on YouTube. He did not go to WrestleMania, but he did go down to Philly to the world, the WWE world, for a day on a Thursday of WrestleMania week, I think. Uh, so he produced some vlogs of that trip, a full walkthrough. So that was cool to see um, all the different exhibits and all the displays there. And he's really ramped up his reviews of all the different shows of WrestleMania weekend. So I have some great content on his YouTube channel. So be sure to give him uh, some uh, uh, subscribe to his channel, watch his channel, check out all his stuff. We want to shout him out. Um, of course you can, uh, you know where to follow us, social media, uh, at Talking Taker, subscribe to our YouTube channel, watch along the podcast there. Um, we encourage you to check out our T Public store. I haven't shouted that out in a while, but we've got our Taker Easy shirts. We've got our Pod Street Crew shirts. We got our half deck section. Yeah, all the shirts, stickers, coffee mugs, hats. Uh, you can get on anything. Actually, I don't know if you can get on hats, but uh, sweatshirts, yeah. baby onesies. You can get all that stuff over there. Hit us up, and uh, you know help out the show a little bit next month june 2024 um i don't I, let's see my pitch maybe was to do uh we did we did undertaker in texas uh as as te not texas as yeah he was the punisher in texas so before the days of the undertaker we did that last month I've uh, been wanting to do him as the skyscrapers. That's like one area of his career we never really covered, Travis. So before he was mean Mark, he had a little bit of a tag team run in WCW, but some fun matches against the Road Warriors there. Um, I think we could cover that whole skyscrapers run in one episode. So uh, that's my idea for next month's episode. What do you think about that? Sounds good to me. A little dance Bobby. Or WCW. 
Yeah. We'll keep the WCW oh, connection. Old going. WCW. Old yeah. WCW. Yeah. I'll be old. listening. Say what? I'll be listening to that. I know. One. I know. We always appreciate <laughs> it. Uh, so yeah, we'll, we'll look at the skyscrapers and that brief run of what might have been for the Undertaker. Isn't that a rock WCW. movie? I think Rock had a movie called Skyscraper. Yes. Skyscraper. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. San Francisco. I think it came out like that in San Andreas. And San Andreas, I remember. Oh, oh, maybe it was called San Andreas. No, no he had one called Skyscraper. There well. was one called Skyscraper, too? I'm telling you. I'm looking it up right now. All right. I know San Andreas had Alexandra Zadario. I do remember that part. It was Mocha. just on like HBO there today. Right. Dude, yeah, Skyscraper. 2018. Dwayne Johnson, 2018. Yeah. With yeah, Nev Campbell. Francisco. Nev Campbell. Heck yeah, dude. Nev Campbell's in, the, in that movie? I have come back for the next scream. So zero memory of that oh, movie. Oh, I remember, I remember the, him hanging off the Scott Cooper. That's why I said it. Anyway, yeah, let's go. <laughs> well, let's go. Okay. <laughs> uh, all right. This is why he needed to come back at WrestleMania, because he's making <laughs> movies like Skyscraper. <laughs> um, uh, who am I to talk uh, anyway, uh, thanks, everybody, for listening. We always appreciate it. Thank you again, Mike and JV. Uh, be sure to follow them and check out the Bottom Line Wrestling Cast, of course. And, uh, yeah, Travis, final words. If you were there on either one of these nights, Raw, I mean, SmackDown or Thunder, we want to hear from you. Or were you one of those like us fl- trying to flip through? Or did you not have UPN? Could you not find it in your TV guide? <laughs> Where was it? Uh, let us know what your thoughts were about the first uh, first Thursday night war. You know, the first night, the first shot fired of the Thursday night war. Um, so which has had many iterations. They had Friday night wars. They've gone Wednesday night wars now. And this is not the other. So uh, let us know what you thought about that. And uh, as always, ladies and gentlemen, stay safe out there and take her easy.